Well, it's crazy. Just a short 30 days after we moved into this building, which used to be Hoonigan's old Tire Slayer Studios, now the DDE HQ, and now what was once the burn yard we call the block. And with all of this, we've had a lot of challenges. A lot of challenges we haven't shared with you guys. A lot of bills, to be honest. A lot of bills. There's a lot of new stuff taking over such a huge building. Our old place was just a mere 7,500 square feet. 2,500 of that was office space, and the other 5,000 was what we called our shop and a little bit of a fab room. Now, we have this huge, massive 30,000 square foot building. And this is industrial. The last place was commercial. Very different than industrial. So I've learned the hard way. So things are a lot more difficult to get put into place. And we're gonna go through some of the massive undertaking and challenges that Dave and myself have been facing taking on this new location. It's exciting, and yes, it promises a lot of opportunity and upside, but that's only, only if we get our ducks in a row. If we screw any one part of this up, it could be literally the downfall of DD. Okay, let's start right here at what we now call the block in honor of my major inspiration to even starting my channel, Ken Block. May his soul rest in peace. He created something that is so amazing. He created so many new parts to car culture and he really brought a lot of motivation and inspiration to so many of us. I ran with that and I created what I wanted to always do, which was play with cars. I just always wanted to play with supercars. So I created this brand slowly but surely over the last decade, we ended up here. The cool thing is when you first start something, you really have no idea where it could go. You kind of just follow the yellow brick road as they would say. When we ended up here, at the abandoned Hoonigan HQ, the best thing about this place was this. Yeah, absolutely. Why? You can drive a car, we legally. Couldn't, we couldn't drive before. Nope. There's a point where like, when you're building a brand, you're willing to take risk mm. because what you have to lose is very little. As you build your brand up and you have more and more that you gain and more traction, you have more to lose. The risk starts to go and the pendulum actually passes itself. So there was a point where Dave and I just weren't willing to really risk our business yeah. and what we built with you guys and so much trust you've given us by going out and just doing something dumb on the street. Not only that, we have like basically 12 employees with families that Correct. rely off DDE. So it's not just about us anymore. Now it's basically a community. That's why we really were looking for a place over the last three years to yeah. get our own version of this, a and place to drive. Way, we've tried many, many times behind the scenes to get a parking lot facility. It's really tough. The stars were aligned for yeah. us that we got to take over this amazing piece of automotive history now with our own twist on things. Yeah. This was a great place for us to drive and yes, we would like to have you guys come here, but there are some huge problems and we're gonna go through that with doing what we're doing here. There's some huge problems with other parts of the building yeah. and we're gonna walk you guys through all of it. So you can kind of actually get a bit of a taste yeah. of what it's like to actually take this on. All right, Dave, you're driving a car out here and you have a whole bunch of people yes. standing around everywhere. Yes. What happens? How's that sound? Well, it sounds pretty dangerous and a liability issue. So what do we do? Well, we put K-rails up. A lot of them, 36 K-rails. 36 K-rails and we actually have a whole bunch more stashed around that side of the building because in the future once we have some other issues over on the side of the parking lot we are going to talk about with the city yeah. once that's resolved we can actually k-rail more of this off and we could add uh grandstands behind the k-rail as well if we wanted to grandstands yeah i've actually been researching that <laughs> you <laughs> son of a that's cool actually so you can have grandstands on that side there also behind the barriers there's room to stand yes so once we get that stuff dialed in and insurance then we could do that but there's still a lot of stuff to do before now and then and we have to do it right yeah we can't risk what we built by being lazy and doing it quickly. So you guys, please be patient with us. There will become a time that we could potentially host events here. But in the meantime, we're gonna make epic content here for you guys and we'll have the odd guest here, but holding a massive outdoor public event. Yeah. Well, it's gonna take a little bit. You know what, this property's so big, why don't we take the uh, golf cart here <laughs> and go for a cruise with you guys. So here on the block, we have all these K-rails and as you guys can see, we went ahead and we branded them with Powered by DDE. And the boys did an amazing amazing job of building our very own stencil in-house using that Jack Cran plasma table. We now have our very own branded K-Rails on the block, thanks to the boys. They did a great job with that thing. It looks amazing, I love and, it. And with the new paving, so you had a guy come in and pave this. Yeah, patch it up. It cost 
Not that much, actually. No, very good deal. It was like, how much? $6,000. $6,000. Some but quotes he, were 20, he was six, so I was like. And if we wanted to do this one L section, like basically from back at the gate up to this corner and then just over to the power line there, yeah. that was what? 60. $60,000. Yeah. This was actually undrivable in the Senna. This was like a really bad spot right here. And see all these little black squares on the ground? Those had like rebar in the ground. The yeah, big pieces of metal, like a pole. Yeah, that they cut off and just, it was like jagged. We had a puncture already once. This was really bad. You can see these patches right ahead of us. It basically was uneven and this concrete was higher. So there was a lip. So if you tried to slide up this and you didn't go right in the middle there where the patches are, you basically like DB the tire. For sure. I almost DB'd the uh, KB43 car. Really? I almost hit the uh, actual rim. Would have bent the rim and you destroyed it. You did mess up the minivan. Minivan's a whole nother story. <laughs> yeah, driving back here has been pretty awesome. It's really why we got this whole building. And we didn't need 30,000 square feet. But let us tell you, with this building comes a lot of problems and responsibilities that we didn't really see coming. And you know, we've had to deal with Hoonigan actually on all this. We're subleasing this from them. Let's shed some light on how that's been going. I got part of this one. Coming in, boys. That? Oh! <laughs> doors go up. They're actually really, really light doors. Ah! Since we took this over from Hoonigan, there have actually been a lot of hidden problems with taking over the abandoned Hoonigan building. And those problems, well, they stretch from really one corner to the other corner of this 30,000 square foot building. And they're all expensive, just to be clear. They're all very expensive. So where do you want to start with this for the these guys? One that's the, most the one I was never expecting that I put no energy into. Yes. The internet. Simple, right? Yes. So we had internet before, it was $200 a month, you have a modem, you have Wi-Fi. So we moved here, I called them and says, there's no internet in your building. None. None. So how do you- By the way, that's a problem problem when you make videos on the internet. This place has a dedicated fiber line. AT&T ran a line just to this building. Where is it? I'll show you. Come on. We were dealing with this and this is something that's been so complicated and so challenging and so frustrating. Nothing's in our name. I'll show you the main thing in a second, but take note right now of that little white box in the ceiling. Which one? Right there ahead of my... That? Right there. Take note of that. Just, I'll reference that in a minute. Okay. Because it's complicated. All right. Now imagine this. You had a little modem in the corner with Wi-Fi. Would that work? for 30,000 square feet of concrete? I don't know. No, it doesn't work. By the way, if you guys don't know what Dave's and my defined roles are when we run this company, I'm like creative and Dave's like administrative. And yes, we both do things on camera together because we're friends and we love cars, but that's the role. So a lot of this stuff, I have to give a major shout out to this guy right here for doing it because he's done all the back and forth emails, all the headache of meeting and setting up different people to come here. My brain doesn't work for that stuff. In fact, I get like agitated and annoyed. I go to avoidance. I'm a professional problem solver. That's what it comes down to. Solving problems and, and there are so many. I'll show you the big one over here. Okay, so this one's been crazy for us to have to deal with. Boom! There's oh. our freaking internet. You know what's funny? I've never been in this room. So, AT&T brings us in. Now, I have to thank Hoonigan for this. They actually paid for this two and a half years ago for $25,000 just to bring in fiber because there was no internet here. Nothing. Oh, is this an empty warehouse? There's no internet. It's built in the 60s. People didn't have internet back then, I don't know. That's nuts. So they had to bring in the drop from the pole for $25,000 and then feeds all into another room. So this is part of the internet. Do you wanna see the rest of the internet? Yeah, I know where this part is. I didn't know about that actually till just now. I thought it was all in this room that he's no. about to walk you guys into, which is even funnier because I walk past here and I always say, this is the matrix room. This is where like, you either take the blue pill or the red pill. And if you get wired in, we can go meet Neo in here. Okay. Holy crap. This is, this is all, you might think this is secure. No, it's not. This is just the internet. This is just the internet. This is all just so that we can upload content and get it to Jamie. So we had to figure out how to hook all this up and whatever. And then every room has a little Cisco box. Yeah. Hoonigan, when we first moved into it, had used our internet. But that didn't work. It didn't work. That was a problem. They've been really cool with it. And eventually we got our internet. I hired the guy come in, $500 an hour to consult him. He's like, cool, you need to uh, get routers for your offices. Those little white boxes I showed you. I'm like, can we use these ones? He goes, no, you can't because they're locked to Hoonigan. How much are they? $12,000. What? 12 we paid grand. 12 grand? No. So I called Hoonigan. And they were like, you know what? Just take them. And they transferred them to our name and comped it for us. They gave it to us. That's what you were talking about. Now it all makes sense. And again, I'm not joking. Genuinely, you guys, Dave and I have been just basically attacking this building and this project from every which angle. And we haven't had a lot of time
time to sit down and kind of consult with each other, like how things came to be. And I asked him because we had no internet. I was like, this is a dumb problem to have, but it's a problem. But it's a problem. And I'm filming all these videos with the boys and creating content on the front end. And then I couldn't send it anywhere. And Dave's like, dude, I'm so sorry. I know. And he even went, I got an interim solution and he went and got mobile hotspot. Yeah, we run around the little AT&T mobile hotspot, but also the internet controls the alarm system, yep. the security camera. So we couldn't be down. So a lot of pressure anyways, it took four weeks to get the internet and guess how much our monthly bill is just to have internet. thousand dollars. 1200 bucks. That's actually not that. Uh, well, our old shop was 200. So we have six Next cost. All right, moving on to the next problem of this building. Oh, and by the way, we got a new merch drop coming out soon. Yes, exactly. Check this stuff out. March 15th, baby. I'm just gonna quickly show this stuff off. Hey, Dave's got this hoodie on right now. I like this one. This is insane, and the color is spot on to that very famous CD 720 we GTR are paint. This March 15th, plus a huge surprise. In by the way, check day. this out. This is coming too. Santa, stay tuned for a huge surprise with our merch. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. So, how many employees do we have at this location right now? This is all. Uh, well, you, me, and three guys. Yeah. Five. <laughs> we didn't get have the 80 employees. 80. So they had actual cubicles. This is all for an internet line for each desk. What? Yeah, so it has the infrastructure to have the whole call center here if you wanted to. That is Dude, crazy. Dude, the cost of doing all this wiring and all that, like look at all the cat files in the server room. We're talking probably $50,000. Crazy problems to have, but we got to give Hoon again. A big, huge thank you for being so amazing with allowing us to just make the move-in process just that little bit easier because this has been, again, very overwhelming, but we've just tackled it from every angle and we're just starting to take a bit of a moment to breathe now and figure out, wow, like what have we problem solved? What was really, really hard to overcome? What was a little easier? And I have one that was kind of dumb. Come with me. I'm gonna take you out this door for one second. By the way. Yes, that is where we put Michael S. <laughs> this was a huge issue. Hoonigan obviously couldn't transfer this to us. And so we were stuck without it for weeks and it was painful and we couldn't get it. And it was driving me mentally because I'm pretty OCD and a clean freak and we couldn't get something as simple as a dumpster. This just showed up, this baby dumpster. Now, you probably remember in a previous video, we had a huge dumpster here. That's like for renovating those big, massive, like 60 foot ones. Dave got that, thankfully, because we we're having such a hard time getting one. But now we have this tiny dumpster and it's overwhelmed and we don't even know when the garbage gets picked up. It's a broken light bulb right there. There's a break, broken light bulb right there. So Problem solved it too. seems stupid, but nevertheless, this is an issue. And and we're trying to film videos with these beautiful cars. I don't want this crap in the background. A lot of this actually came from painting the K-Row. If you're wondering, our old shop had a dumpster, but it was part of the common area. We had nothing to do with it. This is just ours. We just put garbage in it and paid a strata fee. So the old space was commercial, right? So there's rules. This is industrial. There's no infrastructure. There's no strata. There's no one to help you. In fact, the biggest mistake I made in this building was you can see it in this room right now. The lights are on, electricity. Oh yeah. So in our old one, it was part of our triple net lease. I allowed them to put it in there and then once every quarter I got a bill. Here it's all in our name. So I called them and I said, hey, we have this building, we wanna get it. They're like, cool. The deposit, because we're Canadian, we don't have a credit rating. But Damon and I aren't US citizens, we're not residents, so we have no credit score. So to protect themselves, they want $10,000 deposit that we get back in one year. <laughs> we gotta pay $10,000 as a deposit just now, to have the lights on in here. I haven't told you this yet. So I asked them, I said, what did it cost per month when Hooning was here? That's confidential, we can't tell you that. So again, I asked Hooning again, super cool. They forwarded me an invoice. How much is that in your house for, for electricity? I don't know, I don't pay the bills. Come on, my rock, wife does it. Two, 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 $300 for the lights to be on. So I'm gonna say 1,500 bucks here. 2,700 to $3,200. Holy crap, just for power? Yeah, the old shop was 500. Then and we, we have- six x it again, and we're the not bills. Done yet. We have gas. Yes. The HVAC system. Yes. We have water. Do you pay for that separately? We have sewer. Do you pay for that separately? We have landscaping, we have security. We thought this all through, right? Nope. You did the numbers, right? I, I, I knew we wanted the building and I knew the rent. Did we tell how much the rent is? is that? Yeah, I think we told them what the rent is. It's a lot. You guys know that we looked at other options that are a lot more money. So overall, the actual lease amount isn't too bad. The issue now is we probably added 12,000 a month and things we never planned for. And that's tough because you know what? We've had to basically grind our faces off to make the videos to make up for the lack of some of the sponsors. You probably noticed that we haven't had as many sponsors in the videos lately. Nope. And the reason for that is it's actually quite common. At the end of a year, you break the year up, the 12 months into what is known in business terms as quarters. As the year starts, Q1, which is January, February, March, is the slowest time of the year for marketing dollars to be yeah. spent. And there's a reason for that. The reason is people have just spent all their money in what was last known as Q4, right? That is October, November, December. It's the biggest retail time of the year. It is. Thanksgiving, Christmas, 
then you have like all the Black Fridays and Cyber Mondays, it's the new year, and then everyone tightens up their budget. For us as creators, we get paid on ad revenue. It also goes down the time of the year. The ad revenue goes down. Ads right now, so it's all... And you, we, you lose we, one third of your ad revenue. And we decided to move in January. Now we didn't plan this. If you remember right. the video we were filming, we had to leave our spot. I had the idea. We had four and a half weeks to make it happen. Yep. Do you know how fast that is? If you work in commercial real estate, it was really hard to pull it off just legally. The contract's a hundred pages long, so I didn't have time to go. Okay, well, how much is the electricity bill? I yeah, didn't we think just, about it. We just had to do it. We would want to figure it, or not? it out later. Yeah, you want it? Here's the price. So we took on those problems, not knowing what the problems were, or how big they were, or how expensive they were. But we took them on, yep. and here we are and we're just trying to shed some light because we've had a lot of people saying you know various different things about well just do this just make this happen do it for us and it's like we're running a real business here you guys like we have to make sure that we do this properly or else we could be in deep water and when I mean water we could be in over our heads and that's when like mistakes happen and honestly that's when something that you built that was really simple and working really well can get over complicated get too expensive and then you lose it all companies when they grow too fast fail all the time 100% not really understanding like, okay just Keep on, oh, it's coming in, keep spending, keep spending, not understanding well, what are we spending this money on, what for. And what I call fixed expenses are things that are always there. Like, Dave and I don't buy a car, we don't have to buy a car. But this building has to be paid for each month. If we say, hey, we're not gonna film it anymore, that doesn't matter. You have to pay for it every single month. We personally guarantee it. Like, Dave and Fryer, Dave Coulter, guarantee the lease. Yeah. Personally. Speaking of sponsors, we actually yeah. do have a sponsor in today's video. Pelodi. I love these. I'm wearing their new denim line. You have the denim Pelodi shift on. And you guys, these are amazing because they look cool, they're casual, they're very well made, they're suede, and they have the pedal feel because they're an actual lifestyle driving shoe. So when you get in your car, they actually help you be a better driver because you can feel what the car's doing right in your foot. I have a special gift from our good friends over at Pelodi. It's a brand new pair of lifestyle driving shoes. It's gonna give you the pedal feel that you need to control the car like a champ. We've had these in our drawers. I wear them all the time. These are actually really, really sick. Slide your foot in that for a second. Tell me what you think. You know what I love about Pelodi? They pre-lace the shoes for you. Actually, that is That's really actually awesome. Yeah, jump in the Senna and tell me what you think for the pedal feel. Well, that is really good. Right? The heel actually is really nice too, the way it rolls. No, these are sick. They're comfortable, they look cool. Now you got some feel good. something to rock on the block. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to get Tim something special. Tim's a classy guy, so I got a classy shoe. Ratchet. Get these off. <laughs> Black leather, <laughs> handmade in Portugal. The best part about these is this is a shoe that Tim needs because it's gonna look good all the time. It's gonna be durable, it's gonna have that pedal feel for when he wants to go out on the block. That's the wrong foot, first of all. Dave's got you. Thanks, Dave. And the black leather is gonna clean really nice, wear really well. With the black sole, it's just perfect for work use. And you know what? The occasional date night. Hell yeah. Oh, Tim, you dirty dog. Bam, dude. Gangster. They're cool because they go with everything. Shout out to Pelodi. Thanks, Pelodi. All right, guys, these bad boys are handcrafted in Portugal using Italian suede for only $150 before your discount. You can't find a better made shoe with as high quality of materials made in Europe for anything close to that. Yes, it's a driving shoe, but it looks just like a sneaker and it's comfortable for daily use. All right, guys, Pelodi hooked up Mike and Tim. We're also hooking you guys up with a 15% discount. Code is DD15. Link in description. A brand new color just dropped today. Thanks to you guys and your requests that we have. Denim. Bam. I have some denim pants and a jacket, the full Canadian tuxedo. Hell yeah. Before we get to the store thing, do you want to talk about one other thing? Oh, now what? Pest control. Oh, yeah, where is it? There's, well, I don't know where it is. I don't know. But <laughs> by the way, we have a mouse or mice, which is usually not one. There's mice in here somewhere. And on top of all that, there's stray cats outside, and we leave all the garage doors open, then the cats get in. That's kind of a random, funny problem that we've been dealing with, which is pest control. All right. I'm going to speak to this because I was here for all of it. There was that massive downpour. They actually called it a atmospheric river that dumped so much water in Southern California that it was flooding all over the place. It flooded the whole block. It was coming in in one corner of the building, going under the actual false walls and flooding a corner of an area we had to actually clean up afterwards. But what we learned that was a huge problem, and luckily it doesn't rain a lot here in SoCal, but it does rain. It does rain from time to time. There are a bunch of leaks in the roof. That's why we have this right here. We had a 
bucket sitting here and we had a bucket sitting over there. We do need to get someone in to take care of that because what we want to do is put obviously a storefront here and we do not want the next time it rains, you know, having all this built out and having all of our merch and the money that we're going to invest into building this out all wet and damaged because water damages everything. Now that leads me into building the store out. We got a quote for this, it was a quarter million dollars. You can't spend $250,000 building a storefront here as much as that'd be really, really cool. So we're going to revamp that a little bit. That was almost too polished. We want it to be a little gritty, a little more like Route 66, middle of nowhere gas station with like stuff all over. Like I call it organized clutter. You know, having it so that there's like license plates and like old vintage signs on the wall and like filling this all up. But we put old school gas pumps here in the center where we could park a couple of cars and then build out from the halfway point. This side being a storefront with like obviously our merch. That's kind of where we're at. That's the big problem. The actual building leaks in several spots. Leaks over here, was leaking over here and by the cars. Actually, in fact, it was leaking on one of the cars. Actually, your car. That's why I had to clean your car. The Bentley was sitting there and it was leaking on the Bentley. It's PPF. I we're did. good. Yeah, you were lucky. The car was over this way more. Oh, you can see it. Well, there's actual vent right there. Now, you don't want to know how much it would cost to replace a 30,000 square foot tar on roof. It would be hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Fortunately, in our lease, that would be a landlord expense and not a DD expense. That is only saving grace. We still have a big problem with the three sewage lines that run right oh, through. Of that. Yeah, that run right through the back of this side of the parking lot. So that's why we don't have K rails over here yet, but we had a whole bunch dropped off thanks to Chewy. So all these K rails are sitting, just waiting for the day that they will be done. So they're on that side of the property right now with the cranes and everything. Then all that equipment's gonna come to our side of the property. They're actually gonna blow a hole down in the fence right there, bring in the cranes and they're gonna dig all that up and they're gonna work on three pipelines that run underneath our lot. Sewer line, actually like poo poo. Raw, raw sewer, raw poo poo poo. Yeah. And they collapse, they are completely- They are falling apart. Leaking, collapsing. which is why if you are here, you would know the smell right now is not great. Now all this has happened in way, one month. This also isn't great to have just chilling here. Your car and my car would not feather well driving over. Once this is, all done with the city stuff. What we'd like to do is patch a bunch of this up yep. and make this a usable part of the block. So you'd actually be able to drive gate to gate. Initiate over here, come in sideways and drift through this, through this corner. And we could, if we wanted to have bleachers right here. Well, that's what we're thinking because you would slide between this area right here and you'd want to basically come in on this angle. So you could have bleachers Yeah, you could K-rail off this and corner have K rails here. and all that. Can you imagine like third gear, Michael Essa? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Third or fourth gear, me and the twin turbo F12 when it's done. Oh, yeah. By the way, get excited for that because it doesn't look like it, but that car is going to come together really, really quick. And they're really excited to show you guys what they've been working on. So when those twin turbo F12 update videos come out, please, you guys, go and watch the videos. Support Mike, Tim, Mark, and Sean. They've been working really, really hard. And it takes a long time to make one video because they have to take little bits of every day that are interesting and entertaining. And Mike takes the time to explain it to you guys. And they're making a lot of progress. Oh. All right, time to enter the tire shop. shop. Is in business. Mike Essa, you're doing your specialty. He loves tires. Favorite thing to do. That's right. Uh, Just looking forward to the day I can do tires every day, all day long. <laughs> We're getting there. What are you guys working on? Swapping tires out to uh, go do some testing tomorrow on my drift car. Sick. Getting some fresh rubbers installed. I have some fresh rubbers I need installed. I have to finish those off, don't I? You do. You do. So you need to go out there, make some noise, make some smoke. I haven't tried the handbrake yet. You haven't? Oh, you haven't? Test out your driving shoes on the block. Woo. Dude, I'm down. I'm ready. I'm ready to go try this thing. I've been waiting for that handbrake for a long time, ever yeah. since I drove Sam's car. Mike kills it. I'm like, hey, can you do this? He's like, I can figure it out. I'm like, yeah, we got a handbrake now. So like, think about this, think about this. This is a tribute car to Ken Block. This is the style of car Ken drove. Rally car, rally shifter style stuff with handbrakes. So again, this is me taking the thing that I love, supercars, and then the inspiration from someone like Ken, and then putting it into this car and collaborating on that whole idea. It's like, it's, it's exciting, it gets me excited. 
it. It's cool. Now I've not pulled this handbrake yet. I don't know what it's like. Pull, I don't have a clutch. Watch what happens. The whole thing articulates. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. It's like Terminator's hand. And first gear engaged. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Oh man. Now we have, guess what? A massive update on the 720 GTR. And unfortunately, I wish I had better news to report, but that car's got its own problems too. That'll be our next vlog. Yeah, it will be. Well, that's weird. <laughs> that's really cool. That's weird. <laughs> that's actually really rad. Look at it. It's honestly insanely sick. Let me get out and film this. Tires real quick. Keep going. We need to finish them off. You got lots left to go, buddy. All right. smoke cloud right there. Uh, I looked outside third and it, gear. <laughs> I got it was like boom, boom, and the third. Nice. I was like, is that a K rail behind that smoke? I can't tell. I, it was. We couldn't light. see nothing. I, no. couldn't, I couldn't see anything too, and I could tell I was slowly moving closer to the block sign K rail. And I was like, I think I'm pretty good with like yeah, your spatial awareness, spatial awareness yeah. of where we were. Yeah. And a uh, worst case scenario, what, what what happens? Smash the front back end off. And my fix is it. Whole new, no, whole new thumbnail. That's it. Oh yeah, those ones were. Uh, Damn, they're actually hot right now. Feel that, Ryan? Do we still get a carbon tap? Special Tom? Yes. 
Huge shout out to XCOM now. Something else that's really cool that we should give XCOM a shout out for. They have new sizes. So check these out. Look what size this is. Oh. 19s. But they also have something else. Oh, look at that, 18. 18s. So they sent these. For drifting, sliding cars around, you get more grip out of a taller sidewall. Tire spreads out over the concrete or the asphalt more and get a bigger contact patch. Oh, those feel good. These are like fresh, fresh. fresh. Really fresh. Those are really fresh. Thank you to XCOMP. If you guys are looking for some tires, go and check out their brand new size chart. Plenty of options. Grab a set. I promise you, you'll be very happy with them. Yeah, so speaking of added expenses, come over here. We have a new addition to the DD family. <laughs> Yeah. What are we yeah. doing here, Steven? Hugging it out? Hugging it out. Hugging it out. Hugging it out. So Steven's going to come and be our certified exotic tech. He's had years and years and years and years and years of training and experience with Lamborghini, Ferrari, McLaren. Am I right? Yeah. And Bugatti. And Bugatti. Oh, and Bugatti. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, so to clarify, you are certified, certified Lamborghini, McLaren, Bugatti right. Tech. Yes. And you have, right. the cool thing is, he has all the equipment. After his training and working there for years and years, went and ran his own shop and found out he don't like running his own shop, which happens sometimes. So? That sounds miserable. It was miserable. Come here and <laughs> have fun with us. So this you're fun official. Yeah. So it's Full-time DDE certified Lamborghini, thank Ferrari, McLaren, Bugatti Tech has joined the team. Hey, this is a good excuse for me to get a Bugatti. Woo! Good excuse for me to get more money. I hate your first job is he had to fire Tim. And the audience doesn't like him, so they won't care, oh, don't worry. really? Hey, Tim, buddy. Good news and bad news. <laughs> so, Steven is officially a part of the team. Right on. Hey. You, will hey. you will respect him. <laughs> The reason why you will respect him is because he is a certified, gone to the actual factory training for Ferrari, McLaren, Lamborghini, and Bugatti. Oh, hell yeah. Bugatti. That means I have to get a Bugatti now. Oh, Just yeah. so he has something to work on. <laughs> oh, I got the center. No, no, I need oh, to you want a Bugatti. Bugatti. Right, Steven, right. this is how this works. I need to get a Bugatti. Sure on. Sure on. It was Steven's first and last day. Okay. Uh, we have lots going on. Mike's getting his drift car ready to hit the streets. Mike, you want to try this home tonight? Yeah. Oh, just topped off. Is that frowned upon? No, it's ready to go. It's, frowned it's upon. got brake lights. It's got headlights. It's true. You have everything. Yeah. We need to go all the way to Arizona because I know you guys have been asking for a huge update on the 720 GTR. We have a massive update for you guys, and I can't wait to show you. The Mercedes. Murcielago has not had a whole lot of action. And there's nothing sketchier than trying to drive five and a half hours in a Murcielago without it breaking down. Pet cock valves. Pet cock valves. I have a car that I want to hit 100,000 miles in. It's my dream. So to do that, when there's a long road trip, Squatter Corsa. I'm drive the Corsa. Cold Star, who can do it first? Who can do it first? Where's my keys? 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 You really miss it. The shop's cool, the builds are fun, but nothing is as DDE as driving on a freeway at night with your best friends.